What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over another uh, problem, Code Forces Global Round 8. We have Code Forces Subsequence. So, pretty much, uh, I'll just explain the problem. You're given the string Code Forces, which is like this string, and you just want the print out the shortest string that contains at least K Code Forces Subsequences. So, what does that mean? Basically, a subsequence is like this. So, in this case, you have code forces is awesome, right? Code forces is awesome. It contains code forces four times, and these four times are the ones where it has the subsequences, right, of code forces. So, the first one is just code forces is awesome, right? It has one code forces inside code forces is awesome, right? So that's why it's a subsequence. Like it contains the string code forces. That's what it is. Okay. Um, another subsequence of this code forces is awesome is this. It has code force, right? The just code force in the beginning of the string, and it has an S, another S at in the middle, right? In is. So that's what makes it a, a subsequence, right? The reason why it is a su uh, this is a subsequence is because that. It has it contains a certain number of letters that contains both code force and it has an S, so it contains the string code forces. So that's why it's a sub it has a subsequence of code forces, right? Code force, it has a code force in the beginning, and then it has another S in the middle, so that's why it contains it's a subsequence of code forces, right? And this S is a different S from the beginning S that we saw over here. So that's why it's a, another subsequence. It has code force and then another S here. And if we look at the third string, right, code force, uh, code force is awesome, right? This is the same string, right, that, uh, that, that we have in the beginning, code force is awesome, right? Like all these are the same string, but we're pointing out the each subsequence, right? So th this has a subsequence, another subsequence of code forces because it has code force, right? the string code force in the beginning, and it has another S. This other S isn't at the middle to the end. Okay, so then now we have the final code forces. Code forces is awesome, right? And it has a code force right here, and it has an ES, an ES in the end. So that's the reason why it's a, another subsequence, code force here, and then has an ES. So that's why it has, it's another subsequence. It contains the letters of code forces right here, right? Code forces has code force and then has an ES. So that's why it's another subsequence of the total of code forces. Okay. So it has a code force and then it has a separate ES. So that's why it's another subsequence of code forces. So that's basically what a subsequence is. It has, it's basically containing the certain keywords. If you mush them together, even though they're in like different parts of the original string, right? So now our job is to print the shortest string of lowercase English letters that contain at least K sub K subsequences of code forces. Okay. So if we look at here, let's look at the input statement. So if I just put K equal to one, let's say I put K equal to one. What does that mean? That means that that's just the string code forces, right? Because that's only one subsequence. The whole string code forces contains only one time of code forces, right? The, the string code forces, it's itself code forces. Now, if I look at here, if I put three, why does this code force, this uh, code force uh, with three S's contain the three subsequence of code forces? Now, the reason why is because it has code force, code forces, right? This keyword, code forces in the string, which is like code forces, the, the actual string, right? It contains the original word of code forces, but it also has code force, right? It has a code force. And it has another, you could pick another uh, another letter from the string S, right? It has a, you could pick another S and you could still make code forces, right? You have code force and you have another S. So that's why you could still make code forces. That's why it's another sub subsequence of code forces. And then you could also pick the third one, which is code force, pick code force, and then you can have a final S. You pick the final S, the final S and the code forces, and that's why that's your third subsequence of code forces. So that's why if you put three, the shortest sequence that you could have is this, okay? Like if I input k equal to three, the shortest subsequence I could have 
of code forces is this with SSS. So you might be wondering, how do I solve this problem? Well, basically a way to solve this problem is actually to repeat the number of letters certain number of times in this in the right order, right? In the same order of code forces. So if I have like code forces like this, right? I have to repeat a letter, right? It could be any letter, uh, but as long as it follows the same order, I'm repeating it. So if I have like code force, uh, code forces, right? And I'm adding a separate S at the end, that's gonna be another subsequence, right? If I said add two S's, yeah, that's another subsequence. Now, if I add a, another two C's in the beginning, that will also be another subsequence, right? That will be like, uh, that'll be another three subsequences because I add two C's, add code forces and I also have other ones. And if I add like zero, like O, add like another O, like, like two O's, that'll be also another subsequence. So basically what we want to do is just repeat the number of times of each letter in this sequence, a certain number of times for each letter, and then as a result, be able to print out the final string at the end. So I actually couldn't solve this question in the beginning. So, but now I looked at one of um, another person's code and it starts to make sense to me. So because we're repeating a certain number of letter, like a certain, all the letters, like all the letters of code forces right here, um, all letters of code force, code forces, right? We're repeating a certain number of times of all the letters of code forces, right? In order to have a certain number of subsequence, at least K subsequences. So what we could do is we could have a count for the number of times of each letter of code forces, right? So I could have an array that has 10 letters because code forces has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. It's 10 letters. So I could keep an array that keeps track of the letters that I'm going to add, all right? So we're gonna have an array that keeps track of the occurrences of the number of times I'm gonna repeat for each certain character. And then what am I, what am I gonna do? So in here, here's a code. So I keep, we keep a track of count and we initialize uh, all 10 of these, all 10 of these to have ones. Okay, so all 10 of these counts, it's gonna have ones because that's the number of times each letter we're gonna repeat, right? Well, okay, also we, we have to read in K, which is the the number of subsequences we want at least, right? We the number of subsequences, like in the beginning, we're, we're asking, we need to return the lowest string that has at least K, sub K code forces subsequences. So that's why that's our K. So we have to read in that. So I'm gonna keep track of cur. And what is cur? Cur is going to represent the times that I'm repeating, the, or the current subsequence, number of subsequences I have in this string of code forces, right? So the current number of subsequences I have. I want to make sure my cur is at least k. So I'm going to repeat the number of subsequences I'm going to have until I reach a certain number in the end, right? I'm gonna repeat that number of times of the subsequences I'm gonna have. So I want at least k subsequences. So that's why we're gonna do a while, cur is less than k, and we're gonna certain, we're gonna increment our number of subsequences we have as we repeat every single character. So sorry guys, uh, there's like a, I'm mess, I have messenger on, my bad. But yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so what do we do? We also have a position which keeps tracks of the current position I'm at that I'm going to repeat for a certain number of times in the array of characters of code forces. So in position is going to start at zero and that's just going to keep track of the current position I'm on. So like if I go back to here, code forces, right? And I'm going to repeat C a certain number of times, right? I'm going to start my position that I'm going to repeat at zero, right? That's my position. Z see, I'm going to repeat C number of times, repeat O number of times, repeat D number of times, yada, yada, until I get to S. And I want to make sure that my number of subsequences is at least K, right? Of subsequence of code forces, at least K. So that's what I'm gonna do. The position is just representing the, the current character, the position of the character in our array, right? That we're going through. The posi current position of code forces that we're going through. So code forces, yeah, that's the current position. It's gonna start C, O, D, E, F, O, R, C, E, S. 
and it's going to come back to the beginning if we need to repeat that number of times again right that's what we're going to do so yeah that's our position and um while this is occurring i'm going to have position is equal to position plus one mod by 10. and what does this do this is just going to increment the position every single time in this while loop, in this while loop, right so this is just going to go to the next character that we're at so if i'm at c right um after i repeat a certain number of times i'm going to go to o right and a certain number of times d go to d and then yada yada when i get to s i need to go back to c again right so what am i going to i'm going to mod it by 10. so that's what this does position equal position plus one mod by 10. right when you do position plus one, you are basically just going to the next position of the of the character that we're currently on. So code, code forces plus one is going to go to the next character that I'm currently repeating. And if I mod by 10, so like let's say I'm at the end, I plus one. So let's say I'm at 11 plus one. So this is at the last character is 10. I'm going to add one is 11. 11 mod by 10, right? 11 mod by 10 is going to go back to the beginning. So this basically allows me to go back to go back to the beginning if I'm done repeating the number of times of S, then and, and I need to repeat more times. So that's why I'm gonna mod by 10. And then I'll go back to C and I'll repeat number of times of C characters that we need. So that's what this this position equal position plus one mod by 10 is. Okay. So now here's the tricky part. This is a little tricky part to grasp, okay? So Current is going to represent the number of subsequences that we have in this, that we're going to have after repeating a number of times of each character. Okay. So if I were to have current, current, right? If I want to pretty much, if, if I'm going to find out the number of remaining characters I need to keep repeating, I have to divide by the current position that I've just repeated on, right? So remember, count count 10 is the number of times of letters currently in the array, right? So here, uh, we remember in the beginning, we, we initialized count to have ones. So that means that originally, it's just all code forces. All the characters of code forces is going to be one like one that means the number of times of each letter of code force is going to be one 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 right because that's just the number of times well if i'm going to repeat a number of subsequences i need to divide by the current count of each single number right that's going to i have to do that for every single letter because that's going to get me the remaining number of to times of to count right of the subsequences like if i divide by um Let's say I have code forces and I divide by like, let's say I have, um, uh, I don't know, let's say, let's say we want K to be three. Yeah. Okay. Let's say we want K to be three, like here, here. And I want to, um, repeat S three times. Well, in order to understand the, how many I need to repeat, I have to divide by the count of the current count that I have for the letter. So if, if I want three subsequences, right, and I need to repeat like uh, S, uh, S, right? Like I need to repeat S three times in order to have uh, three three subsequences of code forces, right? Because remember we explained that in the beginning. Um, so currently S would have a number of occurrence of one, right? It's gonna have one, and then if I take the the current count of each one and divide by that number of times that's going to be the remaining number of subsequences to have right so we have to divide current divide equal to count of position okay so now after i divide current which is like a number of subsequent sequences i have i need to increment the number of times of each character is repeating so that's what count position plus plus is for we need to increment the number of times each each letter is repeating so if s Let's say there's one S, right? And then now I add another S. Well, the, the number of the count of the times S repeated is now two, right? So that's how we have that, right? Um, so, so now it's the S. So now it would be the count of S would have B2. That's what we have. That's why, that's why we need increment count position plus plus. 
Now, I need to update the number of subsequences I have. Okay, so the reason why we do this is like, let's say we have, let's say we have S is one and we repeated S three times, right? Well, how many subsequences do I have at the moment? So currently we started out with current is equal to one, right? And if I repeated S three times, that means that my new number of subsequences is going to be the current number of subsequences multiplied by the number of times I repeated a certain character. So if I had, remember if I had code forces, code force, now I have code forces, right? Code forces. Now I need to have, um, and I repeat the S three times. I have three different subsequences of code forces, right? Cause we have code force with one, one S then code force with uh, the middle S and then code force with the last S. Right, so that's three times the number of subsequences I have, because that's the number of times I repeated a certain letter, certain letter. Right, so that's why we have to do that. We have to do current times equal to uh, count at position. And yeah, that after a certain number of iterations, after this occurs, right, and then we increase the position of the times that we're counting, uh, and it comes back to the top. Where it's going to keep going and keep going, and then while the current number of subsequences less than k. When it's greater or equal to k, this while loop would be done. Okay, and then we finish of the number of times the count should be at. So after this certain number of times this occurs, we are going to have an array of number of times for each character that we have to repeat. Right. So we didn't we didn't actually we didn't repeat any characters. We didn't add anything to the string yet. This is just counting the number of times we had to repeat uh, the letters each letter of code forces in order to make sure our sub number of subsequences is less than K uh, is greater than equal to K is at least K. Right. So that's what, that's what this while loop did. Right. So now we have to actually print out each, every single character of code forces. Right. So to do that, we have a string S and that's first we start out with code forces, right? That's the original string. Right. And now what are we going to do? We're going to go through every single character, inside code forces. So we start I equals zero, I is less than 10, I plus plus, and this is gonna go through every single character of code forces, right? Now, what are we gonna do? We are going to repeat certain number of using our count array. Remember we had a count, this count array that we updated every single time. This count array basically it gave us the number of times each letter we need to repeat, right? So after we have the count array, all we have to do is just repeat that certain number letter that many times. So this for loop is going to repeat C, let's say I have C, right? It's going to start at C and it's going to repeat number of times that C occurred in our counter, array, right? That's what it's going to do. Then it's going to take O and it's going to repeat the number of times O that we need to repeat in order to get K subsequences. And then it repeats D E F C O R C E S. This number of times of our counter array. And then what are we going to do? We're going to print out the current letter that we are repeating at, which is S at I, which is S at I, which is S at a certain letter. And we repeat that number of times of count. So yeah, that the, after that, uh, we're pretty much done. And then we just print out a new line. So that's pretty much how you do this problem of code for uh, forces subsequences. You have to keep track of the number of times each uh, letter you're repeating. And then once you get at least case uh, subsequences, you're done pretty much. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later.